Spurge here, and in this video, we are gonna break down the new Shark Evo GT. So Shark has created some key changes to the Evo, which is their modular helmet, um, to make it a bit sleeker, a bit more aerodynamic, and a bit more deserving of the price tag. That being said, the too long didn't read here is that this helmet is now coming in around the $500 price point. That is a $50 increase over the previous version. It'll still ship for free. You still have the price match guarantee. But as we walk through this helmet, I really think there's some key misses from Shark's standpoint where this just doesn't feel like a $500 helmet. Is it a little bit sleeker and better than the previous version? Yes. Um, but are there still some areas where we'd like to see some key improvement? Absolutely. So I do have a previous version of the helmet here with me and we'll walk through all those differences within this video. But if you're watching this and you're not sure where to start, this is going to be a modular helmet within Shark's line. Now for the longest time, Shark's claim to fame is that they had the only modular helmet that could also be used as a three quarter. We've seen other manufacturers move into this world, so it's no longer something that is unique to Shark. But as you saw me just open that, that is the big difference within the Shark helmet is that you can use it as a full face or you can slide the chin bar all the way back and it can be used as a three quarter. Now, when we're talking about the helmet itself, it is a thermoplastic shell. Typically when we're talking about a $500 helmet, we get up into more complex manufacturing techniques and materials. So the fact that this is just a plastic shell, a bit of a miss, only two shell sizes. I would expect three, potentially four shell sizes normally for a helmet around this price. So the smallest shell size is a small and a medium. And then if you're looking at the large, extra large and 2XL, that is a separate shell size. There is no extra small either. So just something to note, a bit limited in your sizing and then only two different shell sizes to delineate between the two. DOT rating only, three intake vents, two exhaust vents. The vents and the aerodynamics of the helmet are one of the things that's changed over the previous version. So I like that and we can get into that a bit more later. Uh, you are looking at a helmet that weighs three pounds, 14 ounces in a large, uh, that is one ounce heavier than the previous version. So really no surprises there. It's relatively the same, just a little bit of an increase. And from a fitment standpoint, fits exactly the same as the older one. It's an intermediate oval leaning on the round side. So when we say intermediate oval, we mean longer front to back, narrowed on the side of the head. This one is gonna have a bit more of a round shape to it. So a little bit shorter front to back, a little bit more room in the side of the head. Um, and we do find that it fits about a half size small. So if you're finding yourself between two sizes on the size chart, you're probably gonna wanna size up based on what we've learned from this particular helmet. So let's bring the old one up just so we can see them side by side. And keep in mind that they both have an internal sun visor and the mechanism is still located on the top of the helmet. And the face shield has been redesigned. So a bit thicker, a bit more substantive in its design. One of the critiques of the old one was it was a little bit lightweight. So still pin lock ready, still gonna have the same design where to remove this, you just grab it and you kind of pull out. That is kind of the way that Shark designs this and it's part of the way that the helmet is able to flip back all the way. So no changes in how the shield, the shield comes on or off, just slightly a thicker shield uh, with some, some better visual um, with less distortion in the actual face shield itself. Again, still drop down sun visor actuated on the top. The biggest thing you'll note is that the chin vent has been redesigned just slightly, a little bit of a, of a larger chin vent there. And then up top, the vents have been redesigned and the overall aerodynamics of the helmet have been redesigned. So the vents, a little bit easier to open with gloves on, uh, the older style, kind of had these slides that you had to push. This is much easier to just kind of grab and slide back. And that also then has a built-in spoiler to the top of it where the old one did not. It had this kind of like afterthought of a spoiler pushed onto the back. So again, when we're looking at the new helmet, we're talking about the fact that you are getting a more aerodynamic helmet, you're getting revised vents. And then the chin bar itself, when we're talking about the modular design to this, the old one, just had these two little, or this one little slot where it kind of locked into place. The new one with the uh, updated version has a more sophisticated design where it kind of goes in on both sides and it locks into 
that singular pin right there. So again, bit of a, of a more sophisticated design and it holds this in place in the event of a crash or just, you know, as you're sliding it back and forth, it's a bit more secure there. So really those are the four key areas of change. So the face shield, the chin lock mechanism, the vents and the aerodynamics. So not a, not a ground up earth shaking redesign, but just some little accents that have changed over the previous version of this. Again, still something where I feel like maybe this should be a $350 to $400 helmet based on what we're seeing. And to kind of drive home that point, let's just take a look at some of the finishing details on the inside. So this is a helmet where when we're taking a look at the inside, double D-ring closure, no surprise there, but the cheek pads just kind of Velcro in and they don't stay in place super well. Anybody that's had a helmet where they've worn it for a couple of years knows that Velcro is one of the first things to wear out. And the cheek pads themselves are just kind of flimsy and not really as sophisticated as you'd expect for a helmet of this price point. The other thing to note too, is you can see where they've actually lined the, uh, and actually it might be easier for you to see it with this one on this side. Um, and I'm gonna pull, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the chin curtain out on this. So the one thing to note here is that the chin, or not the chin curtain rather, but the, uh, the neck roll is attached to the, uh, the actual liner of the helmet. So this whole mechanism pulls out all together. And the one thing that I wanna kind of show you is that there are no snaps to the front, brow mounts vent in there, or mount in there. Not the most sophisticated brow mounting system that we've seen. I'd expect something a little bit more here. And then that integrated neck roll system, uh, just kind of, you have to push that all the way in and work that around as well. Um, as we're taking a look, you can see there's a little bit of, of glue residue on the inside here where they just kind of glued that Velcro down. So if you do take it out, you can kind of feel where the glue is still a bit exposed. And then what I was trying to show you on the other one, you can actually see a little bit better here, is that they just use zip ties to hold together the, uh, the in interior EPS and that outer shell here in the front. And they didn't really do a great job of trimming the zip ties off. So you can still see the, the ends of the zip ties just kind of poking through the EPS here. So again, it's nothing that we really would critique this helmet for if it was at a lower price point. When you get up into $500 realm though, it's just not the fit and finish we'd expect to see from a helmet at this price point. Um, and you can see just very limited in the internal channels for the venting itself. So typically on more sophisticated helmets, you would see the channels running all the way from the front down to the back to make sure that that airflow is promoted from the front of the head all the way down to the back of the head. This really just kind of keeps the air at the crown of your head. So just a note there that even though they redesigned the, uh, the vents from the outside for aerodynamics, still a bit limited on the inside. So that is it. That is the update to the Shark Evo GT. You are getting a $50 bump in price up to around the $500 mark starting. You've gotten a couple of key changes that address some of the complaints that customers have with the previous version. But overall, I would say that the Shark Evo GT still feels uh, like it's falling a bit short from some of the other modular helmets that we've seen out in the market. But there's a lot of people out there that utilize this helmet on the rides. And if you wanna hear more about what people have to say about the Shark Evo GT, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device, and you can read other rider reviews from folks that are out there putting the Shark Evo GT through its paces. If you're still not sure as to which helmet is right for you and your riding style, you can always reach out to one of our customer service reps, and they can walk you through all the different helmets available to make sure you find the right lid to match up with your riding style as well as your price point. I want to thank you for joining us for this look at the Shark Evo GT helmet. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.